so substantial and falsified medical product research. Problems of medicine quality have had a very long history. There are reports from ancient Egypt of um, issues with the quality of herbal medicines. Um, the picture at the top right is of uh, um, doctors beating a pharmacist in the 12th century for selling them poor quality medicines. There's been a lot of tension over the years between intellectual property and public health issues that to some extent have been resolved, but there's still a very poor evidence base to inform policy. And it's very, very transdisciplinary as illustrated with the whole range of skill sets that people working in this field have, 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 have contributed. Many of us involved with all the issues on the left in medical research and implementation of health policy to try and produce optimum therapy and to inform national policy. But there's not much point in all of that billions of, of hours of work and investment if there's poor prescribing, poor adherence and poor medical product quality. How do we define poor quality medicines? So in our group, we regard them as poor quality medicines is, is obvious, substandard result from uh, errors within factory, not intentional, uh, falsified result from deliberate fraudulent production, and degraded are those that leave the factory in good, good uh, condition, but degrade in supply chains. Please note that in this Venn diagram, the size of these circles are unknown. WHO issued a key report in 2017. Um, the reference to it is at the bottom right. Um, and they concluded from the, all the evidence that they had then that approximately 10.5% of, um, of low and middle income uh, country medicine supply were substandard or, or falsified. At, at figure seven at the top right, they uh, illustrated some of the drivers uh, that are thought to play a part uh, in this issue. In our group in the uh, Morrow Tropical Network and the Infectious Disease Data Observatory, uh, we've produced these mapping systems. This is the scientific literature, um, uh, which the website is at the bottom right, that allows one to uh, interrogate the scientific literature uh, on this issue for diverse different uh, classes of medicine. And we also um, do this a similar system for lay reports on the globe, which, uh, as Kalen will explain later, we need to take with a, a larger pinch of salt. Multiple examples. This was the, I think, very admirable uh, uh, report from Pakistan over the severe problem uh, in Lahore with the substandard production of a medicine that uh, led to many deaths. So it was a gross error within factory. This was an example of um, a falsified antimalarial seized in Angola, which contained no active ingredient. It contained two types of paint. What are the impact? So multiple impacts as one would expect from uh, products that we really rely on globally for um, health and our well-being. Uh, from death and disability to economic losses, loss of faith, loss of trust, and for antimicrobials, drug resistance. There are multiple gaps um, uh, in the evidence base and its use. And I think one key thing that would like to emphasize that if you in your work and life, you, you're suspicious of a medicine, then please report to the national medicine regulator and also to can also report to uh, the rapid alert system at WHO in Geneva. Uh, I will show this slide briefly now. This is an example of falsified and genuine antimalarial from uh, one country. One of those is genuine, one of those is falsified. There is a clue that you can just about see on this slide. Um, to, let you know which one is genuine and which is falsified. So I'll show this again at the end, 
and would be grateful if you could fill, complete the poll for which, whether you would, if you had one dollar to choose this and the shop only had two packets, would you choose the left or the right? I'll explain further later. <laughs> 